Look, there's this problem that we have in uh, professional sports, particularly in the NBA, where it's it's star driven, star oriented, uh, where we we expect our athletes to be role models, and uh, you hear this a lot. You need to be a role model out there, but there's also this fine line between being a role model and being a player that lives on emotion. And the two don't always go hand in hand. For instance, I think the best example that I can think of at the top of my head right now is uh, a Draymond Green with the Golden State Warriors. Nobody fires up their fan base more than Draymond Green right now in the NBA. It's true. Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, they got all the attention, but if you ask the fans... Who do they want at the microphone? Who the, who do they want to fire them up? It's Draymond Green. And it's obvious why. I mean, he's he's uh what? 6 foot 8. He's undersized for a power forward, but he plays physical. Uh he sometimes kicks players in the nuts, but he he el- he throws elbows. He's not afraid to play ter- dirty, go to the floor. Uh he's that kind of player. And uh you know, I'm I'm a Boston sports fan. And, you know, I've had a few of those players growing up. Hey, the, the Celtics, you know, I, most recent example uh, on their championship team, that player would have probably been Kendrick Perkins. And, uh, you know, and this happens in all sorts of sports. You want the Baltimore Ravens. You want Ray Lewis. You want the player that's going to play dirty out there. You know, the Seattle Seahawks thrive on playing emotional, and sometimes they break the rules doing it. That's just what happens. But their fans love it, and understandably so. But it's hard to be that and also be a role model. And uh, we are in a situation right now with the New York Knicks. With the dis- I think they've hit rock bottom at this point. Although I would have thought that yesterday when Phil Jackson tweeted out a, uh, or acknowledged a story on Twitter uh, from Bleacher Report that bashed. Carmel Anthony, his star small forward. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Carmel Anthony, and I'll get to that in a minute, and I don't necessarily disagree with Phil Jackson, just how he did it, and again, I'll get to that in a minute. But last night, what you saw was a culmination of the dysfunction going on in New York right now, and look, I'm not a fan of the owner, James Dolan, of the New York Knicks. Remember, my college roommate... He would, you bring up the name James Dolan to him, he'd shout at the top of his lungs. And I think that, that tells you how the average New York Knicks fan feels about James Dolan. He's made a lot of mistakes. But he's not the only reason why the New York Knicks have struggled over the last decade and a half. But last night, if you haven't heard, Charles Oakley, who, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Knicks fans, uh, he was kind of the Draymond Green of the Patrick Ewing Knicks of the 90s. And uh, those were great teams. They made the playoffs every year. Uh, but they didn't always live up to expectations. And a lot of that was thanks to Reggie Miller. But what happened last night, if you haven't heard, is uh, Charles Oakley, who's been retired from the NBA for a little while now, uh, he sat a few rows behind James Dolan. Now, uh, obviously, Oakley is has Knicks blood. He'll always the Knicks will always be his team. That's who he roots for. But he's also had some behavioral issues. In addition to being an emotional, physical player, role player during the '90s, you know, and he was a great player. Don't get me wrong. I think he averaged typically average somewhere between 11 and and 16 points per game. He could rebound. He was physical, and uh, he wasn't as undersized as Draymond Green is now for that position. But that's simply because players have gotten bigger. But he played in the same sort of role that you could say Draymond Green plays now. And uh, a lot of that fired up the Knicks fan base when he was there. He was the my Kendrick Perkins from when the Celtics went to the NBA Finals. He was my per- he he would be the Perkins equivalent. Physical, fires up the fan bases, gets in trouble every once in a while. But you can't expect players like that 
to be mentors. You just can't. Draymond Green got arrested in the offseason for getting into a bar fight at Michigan State, his alma mater. And Charles Oakley, who I, I, I'm not saying they're the same, the same personality, but what I'm saying is you can't expect these emotional, emotional driven players to be role models. And Charles Oakley, who I've heard, he's, he's not a national media figure at all. But if you're a New York Knicks fan and you grew up watching those Knicks teams in the 90s, you know who Charles Oakley is. And he sat behind James Dolan a few rows back at yesterday's game between the Clippers and the uh, Knicks at Madison Square Garden. And he started talking shit as loud as he possibly could. And uh, he says James Dolan started it. Who knows? The two do not have a good relationship. But what ended up happening is Security came on over to Oakley, and they, I don't know, they probably asked him to leave, go up and look at the videotape. It got ugly very quickly. Oakley pushed security guard, shoved the security guard. It took multiple security members to to help carry him off the court. He fell when he was going into the tunnel. He eventually was handcuffed, and put in jail for the night. And he's been all over the media all day ever since. But Oakley is an example of how you can't always expect NBA players or NFL players or MLB players, uh, not hockey players because they're Canadians, they're all role models, but uh, NBA, you can't expect these guys to be role models a lot of the time. You just can't. And... You know, a lot of these guys enter the league at 18, 19, 20 years old. They got a lot of growing up to do, and and sometimes they never are able to grow up because they live in that world for a long while. And then when the end of their career nears and they exit, they don't really know how to escape. And Charles Oakley is a guy who is a local figure to the New York Knicks, but he is not a national media figure, and he's not very happy about it. He's also not happy about how the New York Knicks have performed for the last decade and a half, and he blames it all on Knicks owner James Dolan. But the Knicks, they have bigger problems than just James Dolan. And a lot of people that have been critical of Dolan for the last uh, 15 years or so, they've they applauded his decision to bring in Phil Jackson as their general manager. But as we've seen, Phil Jackson as the general manager is not the same thing as Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers head coach, Phil Jackson. And, you know, you could have questioned his actions uh, at the end of last season, how he handled his uh, managerial moves, but we saw this offseason that he really does not have a grasp for what he's doing right now. It's safe to say, as the New York Knicks continue to plummet down the standings of the Eastern Conference, the decision to trade for Derrick Rose was not a good one. And there's this idea in the NBA that if you that the team with the most superstars wins. And while that is true, it's only true to an extent. You need superstars that are able to play together. And here's where I agree with Phil Jackson. Carmelo Anthony wants to be the guy. He does not want to make sacrifices. He's not LeBron James. He just isn't. LeBron James will go down as the greatest player of all time, I believe, when he's done. But he'll go down as the greatest player because he's won championships. And he's won championships Because he's willing to pass the ball. And he's willing to change his game. He's willing to work with other players. He's willing to let himself evolve. He's willing to take a back seat to Kyrie Irving every once in a while. And LeBron said, and I think he said it last season, it would be my dream to play on a team with my best friends, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul. Well, who's been on the trade block these last couple of weeks Because of Phil Jackson just openly muttering out, I want to get rid of Carmelo Anthony. All but saying that. 
sending out cryptic tweets that really actually aren't cryptic at all. And I agree that Phil Jackson should try to get rid of Carmelo Anthony, but what's happened is he's been so stubborn about it that it's made Carmelo stubborn about accepting a trade anywhere he goes. And then you have teams all around the league that do not want Carmelo Anthony. As I was saying with LeBron James, let, and let's face it, LeBron is the general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He really is. He didn't want to play with Carmelo Anthony. And it seems at this point that the Knicks will do just about anything to get rid of Carmelo. His value as a star has never been lower. And it's because players don't want to play with him. He's stubborn. He wants to be the guy. And then you have Phil Jackson, who understands how to communicate with his players as a head coach. He's not in the locker room every day. He's in the front office. And because of this, He's, he's using the same attitude he did as a head coach, and it just doesn't work in a managerial position. You have to know your role. Both Mello, both Phil Jackson are in the wrong in this situation. Now, look, I, I believe you can blame James Dolan at the top, but you can't put all the blame on him as Charles Oakley did. You just can't. And that, now the situation that you have in New York is... The Knicks are desperate to get rid of Carmelo Anthony, and they really won't get much in return. And even if they are capable of pulling off a trade, which will take three teams, because it's it's almost impossible to pull off a blockbuster trade in the NBA anymore, because you have to match salaries, and the salary cap is... It's more difficult than the NFL. It is. And because of this, Carmelo, if he gets traded, he said, I don't want to leave. I'm going to stick it to Phil Jackson and say, you want to trade me? Well, I have a no trade clause. And he said previously that, uh, or this was reported, uh, that he would accept a trade to the Boston Celtics, and many believe he'll go to the Clippers as well, or the Cavaliers, because he wants a shot at a championship. And the Clippers, you know, if there's anyone (laughs) that can deal with multiple superstars with difficult personalities, it's Doc Rivers. But now, what you're seeing right now is the culmination of all the dysfunction that the New York Knicks have suffered for the last decade and a half. And I don't know, there's just something about that organization. But Knicks fans are sitting here rushing. They've been defensive about Carmelo for many, many years. And finally, you're starting to get the sense that the majority of Knicks fans are beginning to turn on him. They're starting to recognize, all right, look, you can't have the ball the whole time. You can't dribble out the shot clock. I mean, Carmelo, first of all, Derrick Rose is the same kind of player. Those personalities do not mesh well together. And this is a team that should be building around Porzingis right now, or at least finding complementary players, or a complementary superstar, or someone. Instead, they brought in one of the biggest ball-hogging point guards in the league, and a player, and then he's playing alongside Carmelo Anthony. And then what you have Carmelo doing, Carmelo couldn't even play with Jeremy Lin. They, when Lin started to take over the league during uh, the Lin Sanity era in New York, he, the Knicks offense opened itself up a little bit. They wanted Carmelo to stay outside of the arc to give Lin a little more space so he could penetrate and kick it out and have room to move around. And Carmelo just wouldn't let him do it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let him shoot. He wouldn't. He didn't want to shoot three pointers. Carmelo, basically, he started lurking in when he wasn't supposed to, and it threw off the entire offense. And now you have Derrick Rose, who is a drive and drive and dish every once in a while kind of player, and we're seeing the same thing. And then you have General Manager Phil Jackson, who is trying to coach the team through his managerial position, and he also doesn't seem to understand that the league has changed. You don't need nothing but three-point shooters like the Warriors have. That's not going to compensate for a lack of depth and a lack of size and physicality. But you do need shooters in today's NBA. You need at least one or two top-notch three-point shooters if you want to contend in this league. And Carmelo won't let his game evolve. He won't learn to become a better three-point shooter. Derrick Rose is not a deep shooter. And then, you know, Porzingis is... 
he's versatile. He can go out and shoot threes, but that's not where you want your big man all the time. They don't have anyone that can shoot the basketball. And Jackson can't seem to recognize this. And then you have former players coming in and yelling at James Dolan saying it's all his fault. It just seems like everyone who touches this franchise, this organization, becomes tainted in a way. And there's just something going on with the Knicks. It's going to take... I don't even know. I mean, they're going to have to get rid of Phil Jackson, I think. And But it all starts at the top. I think probably, uh, if you're an NFL fan, the best comparison would be Jed York, the owner of the San Francisco 49ers, who pretty much ran out Jim Harbaugh, and then you saw what happened one year with Jim Tomsula, out, one year with Chip Kelly, out. And now... He's handing it over to Kyle Shanahan, who I think is one of the most brilliant minds in the NFL. That's, I think, what the Knicks need to do. They need a clean house. And, you know, it all goes back to when Carmelo joined the team. The pieces that were traded to the Denver Nuggets for Carmelo Anthony, that happened because Carmelo forced the trade. Had he waited just a few months, which he should have, those pieces in New York would have still been there. So what it, what ended up happening? The Knicks took a step back acquiring Carmelo Anthony instead of just waiting until the offseason, and that was Carmelo's fault. And it all comes down to culture. Culture means everything in, the, in professional sports. I think it's most important in the NFL, but the teams with the best culture are the teams that win, and... The Knicks clearly have a bad culture, and as you saw with Oakley, uh, you don't rush to his defense, Knicks fans. I know he fires you up emotionally. He was the guy. He was an exciting role player to have, but you can't expect him to be a mentor. And yes, he went into the arena yesterday, and he behaved poorly, and you need to recognize that, Knicks fans, because yes, your owner sucks, but your general manager is underperformed. You have two superstars on your team that won't give up the basketball, and then you should look at the owner at the top. But the the shitty thing about life is the owner controls the team. And as Jed York of the San Francisco 49ers said a few weeks ago, uh, you can't fire the owner. I am the owner. I'm the one who makes the decisions. Jed York, I mean, uh, uh, James Dolan, he just hasn't made a lot of great decisions. And you need to put the public pressure on him to make better decisions, to clean house, to trade Carmelo, to trade Derek or get rid of Derek Rose. Do something because what's happening right now isn't working. And yes, it all does go back to James Dolan, you could say. But Phil Jackson was not ready to be a general manager. And uh, this team, it's going to take a few years for them to dig themselves out because of it. (laughs) 